So this talk is in the same series in 1994. Today we are learning about this mental formations of the absence of delusions of Vo Si in Vietnamese, the absence of ignorance. So in the wholesome mental formations, we have learned about a tin, which is faith or confidence in our practice. And second is them, which is the inner shame we have, the shame to ourselves, the moral shame. And we is the, the shame between uh, before others and gung is diligence, diligence or energy. And both time is the absence of craving, no craving. Both sung is the absence of uh, ill will or hatred. And now today we're going to work the no si, vo si, which is the no delusions or the absence of ignorance. It's a very simple noun, but is a treasure, the most precious treasures that we can have. We, we are pra practicing, practicing only to have this. So the absence of ignorance is the absence of wrong understanding of ignorance. Of delusions and when we have these absence of this misunderstanding and of delusion then we have a lot of happiness because it means this is there is the presence the presence of wisdom the presence of right perception the presence of right understanding, right view. The presence of wisdom. So, Vo Si here means wisdom. If the surface of the sea is not agitated, then that means the surface is calm. There is the absence of ignorance, of delusions, and misunderstanding. So that means there's the presence of wisdom there. So this word Vosi also means the presence of right view. Chánh kiến. We know that the language here is that they, they say it in terms of negativity. So we always have to translate into the language of positivities. Because we don't have faith because we don't have this aspect of the absence of ignorance. The reason why we're not ashamed is because we don't have this absence of ignorance. The reason why we are um, indolent, we don't have energy, is because we don't have this, uh, the absence of ignorance. The reason why we have cravings that pull us, the reason why we are uh, in the sea of sensual desire, because we don't have this absence of ignorance. The reason why we get so mad, we get hatred, resentment, and we suffer is because we don't have this quality of absence of ignorance. So this is the foundations of happiness. When there's absence of suffering, then happiness is there. And the three basic poison we often talk about, which are which are greed, crave, uh, the cravings and 
and ignorance. So ignorance is the the deepest root. So we practice, we observe is to dig up the root of this ignorance and to pull pull up this root. So so everything will be peaceful. Ignorance means it means it means confusion to not be able to see the truth to have delusions because it's delusional that's why we we get mad at each other and we hate each other and we cause suffering upon each other and when we have mindfulness we look deeply and we can break through this block of ignorance and once we break through this block of ignorance then the light is there the Zen koan they have this uh, functions to help us look deeply to break apart these blocks of ignorance within us we have a lot of blocks of ignorance and our practice is to handle ignorance to attain the absence of ignorance so the prajna paramita the highest wisdom is the wisdom that shines so that it can break apart these blocks of ignorance within us. And the energy that we use to, to break apart the ignorance is the energy of mindfulness. That we concentrate this energy of mindfulness We concentrate, we focused, and it become a very great energy, and we shine it into this block of ignorance. We do it correctly, and then these blocks will break apart and disintegrate. I remember in 1966 or 1963 in Vietnam, there was a resi res resistance. Buddhist um, against the Golden Yim government. So at that time, monastic and lay people were sent to prison, many of them. They were oppressed and many died. And there was a monastic, uh, the monk uh, Thich Quang Đức. He self-immolated. He went to the corner of Phang Dinh Phong Street and he pulled on gasoline and he sat in the lotus pose and he self immolate he left behind these letters but there was no um, hatred in them he said please everyone look at each other like brother and sister of the same family please understand and accept each other so the corner of Feng and Fu become the corner of light in history this image of the Venerable Thich Quang Đức um, self-immolate, this image was spread all over the world in capitals everywhere. In the next morning, they see the picture of this monk on fire. We had the poet Vũ Hoàng Trương in Vietnam, and that on that day, he wrote a very uh, nice poem. It's called the, Light, the Fire of Compassion. There are a few sentences like this. Oh, today the, the light is here. Here is the, now is the golden light. And thousands of the blocks of ignorance open their eyes. And the love of brotherhood is vast. Oh, the light is here. It means the light is, is right here the light of mindfulness the light of understanding because this one person light up he lighted up 
by his own body. His body is the torch. Yohang Dao is the light of, um, in the mid noon sun, is the brightest light. It's the light of mindfulness. One light, one, one sunlight, one ray of sunlight appears and it and it focus upon this block of ignorance of delusion of this whole country because at that time we were ignorant we resent each other we attack each other we imprison each other and we think each other of as enemies and we did not see that we are families um, members of the same family and this ray of light comes from the corner of fan and foam and it and it shine, it shine all around upon the whole world. This morning, the light is here, and it's a midnight, noon, in the mid, the mid noon sunlight, and these thousands of blocks of ignorance open their eyes, and the light of, and the love of brotherhood is everywhere. When these blocks of ignorance are, are, are destroyed, is the love of brotherhoods are already there. It's not that you have to grow brotherhood and sisterhood just like a little bit at a time. It has always been there, but once the, the ignorance are not there, it's, um, it's able to shine. When we have these blocks of ignorance or delusions, of wrong understanding inside of us, then we continue to generate more blocks of hatred and more bl and more blocks of um, cravings and other kinds of blocks of negativities. So that's why. We put all the energy of mindfulness toward these blocks of ignorance and make, make it break apart and disintegrate. So this is our practice of Jie Wang. Jie is to put all the energy to focus into one object, to look deeply. Wang is to let that energy go very deep into the object of concentration and break it apart. Ignorance is a block that is very strong, very stable. So in Vietnamese, like the word C, sometimes it also means stubborn. Like your head is hard. It does not just mean delusion, but it also means you're very stubborn not that this person is very um, ignorant but he's very stubborn because these these blocks of ignorance are very hard and they it lasts a long time and the other word jong kesi it's to grow uh, the tree of ignorance maybe it has something related to that to to grow this tree may means we are, we don't understand. We don't understand why we're so weird. Every everyone knows that we are weird, but only us we uh, don't see our own weirdness. So that's in Vietnamese. It's called Chong Kai Si. So in Vipassana. We use this word. Um, we use mindfulness energy to focus into our object, to see that the nature of all dharma is impermanent, non-self, is nirvana, and is non-pure, is fake, is emptiness, is no sign, is no, is aimlessness, and is interbeing, and all of that are to help guide us to break apart these blocks of ignorance. So all these methods of um, deep looking, such as botheng or impermanence, 
it is to break apart our blocks of delusions. So according to principles, we say all dharmas are impermanent. In terms of um, intellects, we can accept that very easily that there is nothing that lasts uh, forever. A house, even though you build very well, one day it will fall apart. A regime, um, a dictatorship, uh, even if they use all of their methods of oppressions, even this very clever, but that regime one day will uh, fall apart. A, a love, even though it's so beautiful, but one day it can break apart. And we see that a flower, a cloud, a rainstorm, all of them are impermanent. So our intellect can see and can observe and can accept that. But that is not deep. The, the practice of deep looking into impermanence. That is just our perceptions of our intellect into impermanence. And this is something we just need to practice in our daily life when we sit, walk, lay down. We have to see the nature of impermanent of this phenomenon clearly. Then we can say that we are practicing the deep looking into impermanence. And we practice in a way that mindfulness is nourished all day. And we are in this concentration state of impermanence and everything we see is impermanent. It's not to see phenomenon that are impermanent and we feel uh, dispassioned and bored because often we think that if we see everything is impermanent then we become bored with it that's not right because impermanence is a necess necessary condition for life without impermanence there is no life sometimes there's no hope because if if our illness, if we don't have impermanence, then we won't have any hope of curing our disease. Such as we sow a seeds of corn without impermanence, the corn seeds will never become the corn plant. So impermanence is very important to all life. For example, we gave birth to a kid, the kids will never grow up because there's no impermanence. So impermanence is not a sad musical note but is a necessary condition for life. And if we look at our loved ones and we see the quality of impermanence in that person, then today we are very careful to not say things that would cause suffering for this person. Today, what can I do to bring joy to that person? I would do it today not wait till tomorrow. It brings happiness right today, not wait till tomorrow. Without this wisdom of impermanence, we would just think that this person would live with me forever. So we would never receive this, the freshness and happiness of being with this person today. And we will miss out on this. In Vietnam, when we see the flower, the night serious flower, when it's about to bloom, we're very happy. So we might be prepared a whole week ahead and we phone or we write letters to our friends like on that night when the night blooming serious um, is blooming, then come and drink tea with me, okay? So at 1 or 2 a.m., everyone sit around with a pot of tea and sit around this uh, this nice seri serious bloom and everyone is very aware knowing that the flower is only there for two three hours so they treasure this flower and 
and deeply enjoy it. We deeply enjoy it because we are aware of the impermanence of this flower. Or when we see a lunar eclipse, a solar eclipse, or a comet, and we know that the time that we can watch this phenomenon is very short, so we watch very deeply. So the awareness of impermanence makes us live very deeply in our life. So to, to repeat again, impermanence is not a sad musical note, it is just the truth. And impermanence, we look deeply into impermanence, then we can see non-self, or vô nghệ. Because, because impermanence and non-self are just one. In terms of time, we call it impermanence. In terms of space, we call it non-self. Now that we're smart, we now have space and time a two sides of the same reality. We take a, if we take away time, there's no space. If we take away space, there's no time. So impermanence is just non-self. And non-self means there is no separate uh, entity. Everything is because of conditions. Uh, combining together to form this. So when all these conditions are not there, then we won't see this uh, phenomenon manifest. So the in in um, the core core arising independent core arising that is the same thing as non-self. So impermanence is in terms of um, so. Impermanence is in terms of time, and non-self is in terms of space, and codependent arising is in terms of mechanics. So these are the ways that mechanics are the ways that it's formed, uh, and then it uh, break apart. That's in terms of mechanics. If we just using our intellects only to trying to understand impermanence, non-self, and codependent arising, then it's not enough. We can talk all about impermanence, non-self, and codependent arising very well, but in our daily life, it shows that we don't have the wisdom on on these um, impermanence, non-self, and dependent arising. In Vietnam, if we say that there are people who have like abnormal uh, men, uh, mentality or someone who is foolish, like someone who is very insane, insane, and if they say something and we get mad at them, then we are the, f the foolish ones. Only the foolish one will get mad at someone who is saying something insane. We are not stuck on what they say because we know this person is suffering uh, from the insanity, and that could be from um, from genetics or sometimes from psychological reasons or or something that's passed down in uh, in the family. So maybe the situation is too emergency, too oppressive. So the person. So uh, the one was the wise one. They will not be mad at people who are insane. They're not mad at those when the the mental states are abnormal at that point. And when we see these people, then we feel so much compassion for them. Like how can they eat? rise and they're not as happiness as happy as us or when they shower they're not as happy as us or they drink tea and not so happy they just do things that make people look at them with these eyes with strange eyes and we think that if i am this person then i probably will suffer a lot too 
and we're able to see that when we have a lot of compassion for the person and we can accept this person so easily even if um, this person might cause a little bit of disturbance inside the family life or the sangha life so when miss francois hits miss terry that's because miss terry doesn't allow her to bring the cat home so miss terry was not mad because miss terry knows um this the absence of ignorance in her because she knows that this this lady is suffering and we know that this person is is suffering so she's so we she's not someone to punish so this quality of absence of ignorance the compassion has the basis uh, of compassion is on uh, the base of uh, compassion is on the absence of ignorance a baby or a child who is stubborn and who is very hard to teach um, we this is a phenomenon that we can look deeply when we look deeply we can see that there's because of parents society or genetics it's all there and when we're able to see the codependent arising and the non-self and the impermanent nature of the child then we do not want to tell the child to go away because where would this child go to because here we have this quality of love and understanding and this child is still not having happiness as we have wanted but if we bring this let this child go to the place without ha understanding and love then this child would suffer even more so from that kind of understanding then we can open our heart bigger and we can accept this child and embrace this child more if we don't love this child who would love this child we are the people who are practicing to love and to look deeply who else would um, love and accept so when we're able to love then suddenly we ab we are the master of self we uh, we don't let anger pull us away our brother our sister our friends they have their issues they have their difficulties they have their worries anxieties and sometimes in the moment of uh, without not having mindfulness when they say a phrase that's not very comfortable with us that can make us irritated and annoyed but if we look deeply we see that this person also needs love also needs our softness and tenderness and needs happiness so instead of saying a, a sentence back to to um, hurt the other person back then we won't say that we breathe and we smile because if we know if we say that words that person will be will suffer even more so that's why we don't say that like when we light the incense and there is the 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 ash that uh, fall down to the to the carpet and if it's hot it's it might make uh, it can cause fire in the carpet but we use our foot to step on that embers but we do the same thing the person say something that can annoy us but we we don't say something back that can cause suffering for that person so we don't do that we breathe and we look deeply and we love because we love that's why we're able to do the things we could not do before i do not want you to suffer so that's why i can keep my precepts i can practice to keep our precepts is not something 
uh, to like follow some kind of prohibitions, to tolerate it, um, to f to lose your freedom, but to keep our precept is to pr protect ourselves and protect the other person. Because we love ourselves and we love the other person. So we keep our precepts. Precepts is a means of protection. Precepts is mindfulness. Without keeping our precepts, we can cause suffering for the other person. And we cause ourselves to suffer too. So precepts protect us and protect the other person. Protects our loved one. The, to protect the person that we love. If in our heart and we, we have this quality of the absence of ignorance, then we have this, we can see that there's this need to feel safe, to feel secure, to be um, consoled. And we see this needs in that person. So we won't do things and say things that will cause suffering for that person. Um, on the sandy beach, we see these uh, broken glass bottles. And there's like all these little bits of glass um, that push up on the surface of the sand. When we see a broken bottles, with all these sharp um, sharp glass shards so we know that maybe a person a kid or a, or or an adult walking by not not paying attention they can step on and bleed we don't know who this person is but we will sit down and we pick up all the glass shards and our action shows that we have this love and understanding even if the object <coughs> of our love is is very big but we don't know who that is but we know that someone can step on these sharp glass shards the same with the person who live with us no one wants to suffer one everyone's like us we want have feeling this happy secure feeling protected and we see that in ourselves and the other person then suddenly we won't do, say things or do things that would cause suffering uh, and pain in the other person. So precepts is because we do it out of love, not because of the inhibition. If we keep precept just because of inhibition, then it's not the Buddhist um, practice. Because of love that I want to protect you. It's not because that uh, it's banned. That's why I don't do it. We look deeply into impermanence the nature of impermanence and we look at all dharma and see the nature of impermanence in them and we can also start to discover the nature of non-self and codependent arising nature of all phenomena there are many doors dharma doors such as emptiness or calm bottom or aimlessness or signlessness um, and votak is aimlessness or tung tuk into being or tung nyap um, interpenet interpenetrations or bok nye, which is non-duality or Nirvana, Nikbang. All these qualities of reality 
we we have to experience it for ourselves through our daily experience it's not just to think about with our intellects only we live with mindfulness so that everything we come in contact with such as the blue sky the cloud the baby or the anger within us they all have this quality of impermanent non-self non no aimlessness signlessness interpenetrations and if we see this then that these blocks of ignorance within us will break apart don't think that we will have this absence of ignorance is when we break all these blocks of ignorance in us so these blocks of ignorance we have big blocks small blocks so if we break apart some we can uh, already touch the absence of ignorance. So just we're talking to someone and we don't understand them yet. And then suddenly there's a light that hits us. And then we say, ah, I understand. I see. That is the, the signature of, of the breaking apart of the block of ignorance within us. So here, the, when you say, I see, that you have shined the light, I have seen that, I understand. So that's the, the light of the absence of ignorance. Sometimes we imprison ourselves in, for decades in these blocks of ignorance. And, and one day something happened and that um, breaks apart this block of ignorance. There was a man who, who suspected that his wife uh, slept with the neighbor while he was away. So when the wife uh, was pregnant with a baby, then uh, he nourished that doubt and that suspicions, and he would suffer a lot for the whole duration of the nine months, ten days. When the baby was born, um, he still think he was still ignorant and suspected that that was his neighbor's. Um, the neighbor's child and he was very cold toward his wife so so he has a very big um, so he was has a very big complex um, and um, did not want to be vulnerable and did not want to tell, ask his wife about uh, what happened with the neighbor so the wife was very confused like why did my husband became like this and he, they raised the kid until um, becoming a teenagers. And one day, uh, there was a relative who came and said, Oh, this boy, he looks exactly like the father. And then that's when this man looked look back at this. And this um, blocks of ignorance, this blocks of uh, suspicion in him broke apart. And he finally was able to accept his wife and his son after these decades of suffering and pain so ignorance is the basis of suffering and pain and we cause suffering for ourselves our, our our kids and our wife for the whole decades it's because this block of ignorance within them ignorance is is a it's very stubborn it's very uh strong it goes around it goes with uh, pride and it goes with the feeling of being inferior and he did not find the way to to dissipate to dissolve this block and to find ways to shine light on this block so of course in this case it's not that there was only three people who suffer but other people suffer too Everyone in the family saw that and they suffer. And the neighbor, since that day, he was being seen with like a fourth of the eye, of the sight, the fourth of understanding. Cause, so he did not understand why. So the ignorance is the basic affliction of all. All the things that we think we say are wrong perceptions, delusions, 
They are all products of ignorance. So delusions is a wrong idea we have about a person or an, uh, something. Each of and all of us, we have so many wrong delusions. Uh, me or you, we all have that. So our practice is to narrow down uh, and having less wrong delusions. The other day we saw on the beach that we saw the pebbles on the on the on the beach. They're very rounded by by the frictions from the water. It's very smooth. So all these blocks of ignorance within us, they need to have that friction. They need to be rubbed against our mindfulness so that it can become um, uh, sanded down and can uh, can be can dissolve. So the happiness in us and happiness of everyone, it depends on how we can lessen these blocks of ignorance within us. It's because of ignorance that we have war, because of ignorance that we have hatred and resentment and discrimination. So this quality of absence of ignorance here is the absence of these blocks of uh, wrong delusions. And there's the presence of the wisdom on impermanence, non-self, emptiness, aimlessness, silentness, um, codependent arising, interpenetration, interbeing, and nirvana. There are many other methods, but they're all pointing at these blocks of ignorance and to break them apart. In uh, Buddhism terminology, we're often talking about vong tưởng or delusional uh, thinking, delusional thoughts. We need to understand this word very carefully. Tưởng or samsna. It is a perception. So this word the um, it, it has the word tum, which means the image, the sign. So that image is the object of our our mind. So it's called perceptions or idea, an image. A notions. And a perception, a wrong perception often have the subject and the object of the perception. The object is, um, is that sign. So, for example, we have a perception about the table. We have a perception about the table and we have an idea about the glass or about the flower. Perception of the, the glass, the glass, perceptions of the flower. So we have perceptions about the earth, we have perceptions about the water, we have perceptions about the Buddha. And in this perception, I use the word jiyak is easier to understand perception. G yak not G yak G 
Ji Yak is wisdom. Uh, is the sister Ji Yak? That's the name of sister. But Ji Yak, it means it's a concept, an idea uh, toward an object. So this is a perception, a view. It is not just something you imagine, it's a perception. This perception, it can contain erroneous um, uh, ideas, whether it contains um, a lot of or a little of the erroneous ideas. Um, we are still normal people and we're not the fully awakened one. Then we can we we could say that you know our perception can continue can contain um, between 20, 30 percent to 100 percent of erroneous perceptions. So we always have to be um, careful and aware that our perception can contain errors. To know that is already lessens a lot of suffering. So the koan that I give to Western practitioners is, are you sure? Are you sure that your perceptions is correct? So are you sure? So that you are already get so angry and decide so quickly? Are you sure that's the right perceptions? You need to take this mirror out and to look again and again and again to see like, is this correct? So in many, in the cases of uh, not having mindfulness, and we can say that we decide uh, in Vietnamese, it's called bạch chấp bạch nhuyễn, which is do it so quickly. And we might perceive something that is the opposite of what the person is doing or thinking. So we re react so quickly just based on our um, wrong ideas. So our perception could be more than 100% erroneous. People might say something white and we think it's black. All of our anger, our foolishness, and our annoyance, irritations, they arise from these wrong perceptions. So the issue here is, is our perception. It has how much of it is delusional. It's almost like um, how many, how many, um, don't just say that, uh, oh, my perception has nothing delusional in it. So the word vam means erroneous or wrong. So this is wrong perception, erroneous perception, mistaken perception. Something is impermanent and we think it is permanent. That is wrong perception. Something that is poisonous and we think is good for us, nutritionists, nutrition, no, then that's wrong perception. Something is not beautiful and we think it's beautiful. That is wrong perception. Something that is that's not necessary and we think it's very necessary, then that's wrong perception. Something that can bring about suffering and we think that this is my conditions of happiness, then that is wrong perception. So we have to look very deeply to see this quality of uh, mistakes or errors in our perception. If we don't practice well, then we just think that, oh, if I think about fame, riches, and uh, cravings, that is wrong perceptions. When we think about the Buddha, we can also have wrong perception by the Buddha. It can completely be wrong. When we uh, crave, we want to eat pho or hamburger, then we say, 
ah, why do I have this wrong perception like this? This word we used, wrong perception here, is not very correct. We should think about something uh, better, such as the Buddha, Dhamma, or the Sangha. That's not correct. We, we can have wrong deceptions when we think about the Buddha. What we think is the Buddha might not be the Buddha. What we think the Dhamma might not be the Dhamma. So that is the wrong perceptions about the Buddha, the wrong perceptions about Dhamma or Sangha or Nirvana. All perceptions can be wrong. It's not just perceptions about sensual desires. Um, can be delusional. So the opposites of delusions, then there's Zheng Te Ng. Zheng is true, true perception. We don't use the word true perception at all. We don't use this word. If we use a word, a uh, true perception, then that just means right view, just mean uh, wisdom or insight. In the process of looking deeply, then this um, this wrong perception slowly melt away like the snow and you can realize the true quality of it. For example, you live together and each of us have wrong perception about each other. We say, oh, my, my husband is so kind, so wise. Whatever I say, he follows. Uh, or my, um, my wife is such an amazing goddess that's there's no such person like her ever if without my wife then my life is not worth living and then when we live together for one or two years and then we see all these things that we say is the true perception this illusional quality start to melt away and the true quality start to show up and we see that, oh, sometimes my wife is kind of like a witch. She's not as kind like the goddess back then when I first bury, marry him. Or when I first marry him, he was a prince. And now he become like this cold, cold, cruel guy. Then these kind of things start to show up, such as the snow melts under the sunlight and it shows that oh there's grass underneath and we see that this soil this earth is actually not uh, snow white but it's green with grass so wrong perception is the wrong idea about reality and we have delusional uh, thoughts about our kids about our parents our teachers our friends so we don't know how to interact correctly with them. And we cause all these uh, internal knots within them. So to live in mindfulness is to not have wrong uh, perceptions about our object of um, perceptions. So Wrong perception is the basis of all of our afflictions, all our suffering, all the things that weigh on our heart, all our sadness. That was all born from wrong perception. So to bring our mindfulness to shine light upon these blocks of ignorance, delusion within us, and make them break apart, then we can escape or be liberated from the pain and suffering and resentment within us. The Buddha said very clearly, if you are afraid, that's because you are ignorant. If you are angry, it's because you're, because you're ignorant. If you are in despair, that is because you're ignorant. So look deeply 
to have this quality of the absence of ignorance. So the absence of ignorance is something very precious of our consciousness that we help this quality to manifest when we practice mindfulness and break apart the ignorance. Um, so I think I would pause here, um, line 54. So we can catch up with the next part of it um, after.